Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, basically, uh, I plan to show you how we can construct uh, the LM curve uh, using the basic uh, Keynesian framework. So let me just get the slides uh, to be presented. Okay. So what um, we plan to do, okay, before we uh, go ahead with uh, constructing our LM curve, so what we are doing is that uh, our long um, term objective is to be to analyze the equilibrium in three markets altogether. So we have the goods market and uh, secondly, we have the money market and finally, we have the bonds market. Now, if you remember from our previous discussion, uh, bond, the money market and the bonds market uh, are closely related okay, because of the uh, the uh, the form of wealth. Okay, Under the Keynesian, we simply assume that the form of wealth that the household going to hold will be either in the form of money okay, or in the form of non-monetary assets, which we will simply call it bonds. Okay, So um, basically what we plan to do is that we, we're going to use this framework to find the interest rate and income level R and Y that simultaneously uh, equilibrate uh, the goods market as well as the money market. So this is basically uh, what we're going to, the, the purpose of using both the IS and LM curves, where IS curve basically going to give us the combinations of interest rate and income level that uh, lead to equilibrium in the goods market, while the LM curve will give us the combinations of interest rate and income level that make sure the money market okay, uh, will be in equilibrium. Um, so to do this, you're going to assume all other variables to be exogenous and fixed. So these other variables are money supply, government spending, tax collection, as well as expected profit. Now, let's do the LM curve construction. There are two determinants of money demand from our previous discussion, which are the income level. The income level positively affects uh, the demand for money due to transaction and precautionary motive. So if you recall our discussion, uh, with regard to the motive why people want to hold money based on the Keynesian framework. So there are three purposes, transactional purpose, precautionary motive, as well as the speculative motive. Um, due to the transaction and precautionary motive, income affect money demand positively. While due to speculative motive, uh, because of the potential uh, return in the form of interest rate from bonds, so the interest rate affect the demand for money negatively. So we can express this relationship in a general form uh, as stated in equation one, where money demand is a function of income as well as interest rate. Now, to remember, income affect the money demand positively while interest rate affect money demand negatively due to speculative motive. From this general form, we can specify a functional form which is linear, okay, a simple linear form to represent the relationship between these two determinants and money demand. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, money demand is a linear function of C0, which is the intercept, okay, which basically represents all other factors other than income level and interest rate. Income level affect money demand positively with C1 and then interest rate affect money demand negatively with the coefficient C2. Since we have already put a negative sign here, so the value of C2 would be positive. Okay. Now, what we need to do when we want to construct the LM curve, we need to find all combinations of income as well as interest that equilibrate. So we are trying to find the right couple uh, between income and interest rate that make sure the, 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 the money market will be in equilibrium. In other words, uh, the money demand okay, would uh, equal to the fixed money supply. Okay, So this combination will give us the LM schedule. Okay, the LM schedule. For money demand, we're going to use uh, the second equation that we have stated before, the specific linear form, okay, to make our analysis simple. While we know that money supply is fixed, is exogenously determined by the central bank. Now, to get the equilibrium in the money market, it requires that money demand, okay, money demand, which is the right component, the right part of equation three, must equal to money supply, okay? So let's just try to um, uh, have a look at the money market. So if this is the graph, okay, for the our money market, so we have the quantity of money in the horizontal axis. We're going to have the uh, interest rate, okay, on the vertical axis. So money demand would be downward sloping, okay, due to uh, the pre uh, this, uh, speculative, okay, because now we are measuring, okay, so this is our money demand, okay, money demand, when our income level is Y0. We're going to assume income to remain the same and we also know that uh, the money supply, okay, which is uh, supplied, okay, by the central bank will be, will be fixed. 
Okay, so the intersection between these two, okay, the intersection between these two would give us the uh, equilibrium interest rate as well as the equilibrium quantity of money in the money market. Okay, um, now let's say we want to find the uh, the LM curve. So what we need to do is that, so let's say I'm going to use a new graph here because I need, let's start with a very uh, low interest rate, okay, where our situation, uh, so... So this is what we, we, we are doing. We need to analyze uh, what happened in the money market and then we need to translate this okay, into this relationship between income level as well as interest rate based on the relationship, what based on the uh, situation in the money market. Okay, so let's start with a simple, this is our money supply curve, okay, money supply which is vertical, okay, since it is being supplied exogenously by the central bank. And we're going to start with the, let's say, very low interest rate. Okay, very low interest rate. So this is our money demand initially, okay, when our income level is Y0. So this would give us the uh, initial equilibrium interest rate at R0, while our money supply, okay, will be here. The, the, the equilibrium quantity of money will be here. Okay, let's say we are going to put this to be M bar. Okay, now we have... Um, one point okay one point so let's say this is um, r0 okay which correspond to this okay this level of uh, interest rate and let's say this is y0 okay this is uh, the corresponding y0 which we obtain from here okay which we we we, we, we have this uh, uh, from here now let's say what happens when the um, uh, income level okay income level has uh, gone up okay because now we need to find the Remember the, the objective of uh, how do we want to construct the LM curve? We need to find these two couple, okay? This uh, this couple uh, of, of uh, income level as well as interest rate, okay? So by uh, take note of this um, the equation, okay? The equilibrium in the money market, okay? Basically, money supply must equal to money demand, and money demand, okay? We're gonna use okay the specific uh, linear form minus C two. R. Okay, now basically we are equating these two. Okay, we are equating these two and we have uh, rewritten. Uh, we have uh, basically simply rewritten our money demand to be in this form. Okay, in this simple linear equation. Okay, now take note why. Okay, we can um, uh, see that um, we can rearrange this equation, right? This equation where this is simply now money. Huh? As these two are equal, equilibrium in the money market will require this uh, money supply equals to money demand. I'm going to simply rewrite this to be simply M. Okay, simply M. And with that also, I'm going to simply put M here. Okay, since they will be the same huh, for both. So we can rearrange this. Okay, we can rearrange the equation because in the LM curve, we have interest rate, okay, on the vertical axis. So that's what we plan to do now is we want to isolate Okay, R to be on the left-hand side. Okay, so let me just try to use whatever that we have written earlier here since I have some space over here. So the equilibrium in the money market would require that, uh, would mean that the equilibrium quantity of money would equal to basically the, the money demand equation. C1, Y minus C2, R. Now let's rearrange this. So we're going to have C2, R to be equal to C0 minus M plus C1, Y. And we're going to have C0 divided by 2 minus M divided by C2 and plus C1 over C2Y. Now, this will be basically the equation okay, that we can use in order to construct our LM curve. Okay, our LM curve on this side. So, let me just uh, reproduce that equation over here. So, we have uh, C0 over C2 okay, uh, minus M over C2 plus C1 over C2Y. Okay, now that we have this is our first point. Now, what happened, let's say, when income level goes up, okay, as income levels go, goes up, we want to find the next combination. Okay, so now our analysis now will be what happens when, let's say, income level has, has gone up from Y0 to Y1, okay, which is now higher. Okay, as income level has gone up to Y1, Okay, if you remember the, the income level affect uh, money demand positively. Okay, so since now 
a household have higher income level, they would be demanding more money uh, due to more transaction that they would like to perform as well as the precautionary motives. Okay, the precautionary motive. So this would be the uh, reason why money demand gonna then shift okay to the right. Okay, money demand would shift to the right due to a higher level of income. So now this would be the uh, new uh, demand for money which has shifted okay to the right due to increasing income. Now as um, our money demand has gone up, has now you know to make it simple, people has now become richer. At the old interest rate R0, there is a pressure because now there is an excess demand for money and supply cannot make it. Not enough money being supplied but too much money being demanded Okay, at the old interest rate R0. As you can see, somewhere further to the right here, the quantity of money demanded. Okay, so now there is a pressure in the money market where interest rate is pressured to go up. Okay, interest rate will be pressured to go up in order to make people... To okay so there's a pressure continuously it will continue to go up until we reach okay the new equilibrium which is at r1 okay as interest rate goes up interest rate goes up so basically what happened is that people would uh, some of the some segment of the population would be uh, attracted to hold bonds rather than money because now uh, it seems to be more lucrative more profitable to hold bonds because now uh, the interest rate is higher uh, so it is uh, less attractive to hold money, uh, to hold money because of the higher interest rate. Okay, so this adjustment will continue until we reach the new equilibrium at R1. Okay, at R1, so there's no more pressure. So interest rate would then reach, uh, would be stable here. Now we have a, a, another combination now between R1 and Y1, which we can then translate it here in the money, in, the, in, in this LM curve. So this is R1. And this is the correspondingly the higher income, which is now Y1. So we have two points. So with these two points, we can combine them. Okay, we can simply combine them. And this will be, okay, if you have a ruler, it will be better. So this will be the, our, our LM curve. Okay, our LM curve where we have uh, obtained, okay, we have constructed our LM curve by using uh, these uh, two combinations uh, of income level and the uh, interest rate, okay. Um, so this line, okay, if you withdraw further down, you should be able to also note that the intercept is negative because this would be the, okay, so based on what we have uh, done uh, here, okay, the first component, this term would be the intercept of the LM curve, while this would be the slope, okay, of the LM curve, C1 over C2. Now, the intercept is negative because this value is smaller than M over C2. Uh, M is our money supply, so that's why our LM curve would have a negative intercept. So, this would be C2, uh, C0 over C2 minus M over C2, which is our uh, intercept. Okay, so that's uh, all uh, for this part with regard to the construction of the uh, LM curve. I hope now you are clear on how... Um, uh, you can uh, construct uh, the LM curve. Inshallah, we'll see in other videos uh, uh, on, on, on other characteristics, on other features of the LM curve. Thank you for watching. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.